Hello, everybody. This is Chris Wilmot and my partner, Sean King, and this is the Pulling Around Show. Today, we're here with Buffalo, Jason Hunt. Jason, thanks for joining us, bud. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Jason. Hey, Sean. Long time no see, buddy. Man, this is going to be a fun one. I don't know what you're going to say, but uh, there's no filter on this channel, so that's good for you. No, and, uh, this, is, this, is not, this is not made for kids. <laughs> if you've watched any of these before, Jason, uh, Chris has some real formal questions, and then I just chime in and ask the random ones. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, let's just talk about everything, because this is a good time to do it, right? Especially with what's going on in the pool world, right? And all this Fargo stuff and everything that we've come up in, Chris. I mean, uh, Sean... I don't know how, you know, what your story is, Chris, you know, but I mean, I'm, I'm, every one of us that's been a good player that's come up in any city, we probably have a very similar story. I mean, whether our circumstances are the same, those can be different, but the outcomes, if you got to be a top player, are probably pretty much the same. You, you're dead in the water. Right. And you either have to move or travel or you're forced out of your community. And so, yeah, so I don't, you know, I don't know your story, Sean, but I know that through meeting you and playing each other and speaking and, you know, I know you've got the same mindset as me before when you were doing that TSP and you were calling me to try and I have my own thing that I created and you're trying to get me to do my yours, and I was trying to get you to come on board with mine at the same time. And you know, I mean, we have a lot of we have we both want to help pool, really, which is one of the biggest things. We've always had that mindset, and not a lot of top players have a lot of top players, they don't give two shits about nobody but themselves, right? And people like us have always tried to do things and create things to actually help the sport of pool. Because within helping the sport of pool, we're able to help ourselves at being at the pinnacles of these triangles in our cities. Right. Yep. Well, one thing for sure is you've always wanted pool players to make more money. Yes. And uh, we share Number that. One. Number one. Yeah. And there's no reason for it not to be. Right. And that's one of the things that in the, in the Buffalo's Progressive Pool League, the tournament league that I've created, that's the main goal is on a daily basis, somebody's going to win a thousand. On a daily basis, somebody's going to win 500 for second. On a daily basis, somebody's going to win 250 for third and fourth. So every day we got a tournament, somebody's winning a fucking thousand, somebody's winning 500, 250, 250. And since I split the brackets, two of those players are going to be low players. Two of those players are going to be high players. Sign me up. When do we play? I got to So we're we're going to talk about all this, man. This is this is this is this. This is what pool needs. This the thing that I've created is what pool needs. We need a ladder system. We need a lucrative player ladder system where somebody can progress independently earn their own money, don't need to ask nobody, don't need no state courses, no sponsors, no please do this, and then they're taking half or two-thirds of our fucking money being used. Like That's like me saying to you, hey, listen, I'll give you a ride to work, but you got to give me 70% of your paycheck. That's basically what goes on, right? So, I mean, uh, but that's that's what it is. It's an independent, it's just a tournament league where every day all across the world, no matter where we are, there is a tournament, a day, every day, 365 days a year, no matter where you are on the face of the planet. Oh, it's, where's the Buffalo's Progressive Pool League Tournament? Oh, it's at Fred's on Monday, Billy Bob's on Tuesday, Katie's Billiards on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I go to Florida, where is it? Oh, it's here. I go to San Diego, where is it? Oh, it's here. And now, as we progress through the ladder, at the top of the ladder, once you win, so every six tournaments you win, you move up. But everybody plays even except for the finals. But in the, fin in the end, 
the guy that's at the top of the of, at, at the triple a level once he wins six times the tournament league puts him into a fucking pro event so you get a free ride into a pro event and if you choose not to take the five thousand dollar package to go play in a pro event you get half in cash so that's twenty five hundred so on that day you not only win the tournament for a thousand but the league cuts you a check for twenty five hundred. So that's a thirty five hundred dollar day. Wow. And then you I just know, play I don't another know, uh... you try to win another six every six. So once you're at the top level, every six six tournaments you win, you get another chance to go into a pro event or take the cash. I like it. I like it. Um all right, let's let's rewind the tape. Let's get to know Jason Hunt a little bit. Uh, for people that don't follow you online or haven't met you already, let's. Uh, we can talk about anything. We got lots of controversial yeah, things we can talk yeah, about. Yeah. But got I want some people to get to know. Cool. I want some people to get to know you, your backstory, um, your, a little bit right, about your well, life and what kind of person you are. Yeah. So I grew up in Buffalo. I got my, my family's a court reporting family, right? So they're not uh, in the pool world, never have been, okay? Um, you know, good blue collar, up lower white collar, upper blue collar family, you know? Uh, nowhere near rich, but do well for themselves. My grandfather uh, was a very famous Supreme Court reporter. Uh, he was one of the first people to uh, that they gave the stenograph machine to when it came out. Before all, all uh, in the court reporting business now, it's all mostly women, right? But back in the day, it was all men, because what you had to do was you had to be able to command the courtroom. You had to be able to tell the judge stop, tell the attorney stop, you know, command the courtroom. I didn't get that, and they're writing it. So my grandfather was one of the best in the country, very famous guy. Uh, he was one of the first people to be given uh, the the stenograph machine when it first came out. They gave the best. There was only a certain amount of machines that were given out all across the country. My grandfather was one of them to receive it. And then he started his own court reporting business. And my father came up along with <coughs> my two uncles in the in the business uh one of my uncles was like the technical guy the other guy was but my dad was the court reporter so my my father was a very famous court reporter as well took over the family business my mother worked for my grandfather as a court reporter before my dad even came into the office and uh my my mother was my grandfather's favorite court reporter and then my dad came into the office and my mom and my dad got together and they got married and then my father took over the family business and then they had me and my little brother so when i was a little kid you know i was my dad read me shakespeare my dad you know read me sherlock holmes the original sherlock he read me all the classics charles dickens you know, you name it, they were reading it to me by the time I, I could sit on my father's lap. And they were doing, you know, they they're what a court reporter comes home and he proofreads his cases. So I'm sitting on my dad's lap at, you know, however old, as a baby. Uh, you know, they're reading medical cases and stuff to me. So I had a, you know, I, I, I learned very young to read, write, all those things. And uh, so uh, I had a very good home formal education. And then when I went to school, I was I was probably too smart for my own good, right? So I was always in trouble for talking back and all this stuff. So, I mean, I was like the kid that was always in detention but really didn't do nothing wrong but had a smart mouth type of deal. You know, funny that being me now a days, right? You'd never think. but. Uh, but the other thing was, was I, I was, I was a skater, right? So I, I played sports, but I was small and skinny. And I, you know, I played like little league football. 
I was I was the, the free safety. And one time I got hit by one of them fucking huge black dudes that look like they're 28 and they're 14, 13 years old. And it almost killed me. And I was like, fuck this. You know, I ain't doing this shit no more. And, uh, but I've, I've always been a skater, right? And I've always been, I always had a, a, a gift to an art. So I was drawing at an extremely young age. If you look at some of the pictures and things that, you know, from when I was 12 and 13 years old, drawing comic books and dinosaurs and things. And like, I could look at something and I could draw it exactly the way that it looked. I wasn't somebody that could, that could really draw things out of my head. But if I looked at something, I could draw it picture perfect. So I had these talents uh, when I was younger. And my, since my family was always working, I was always out playing sports. And uh, so, and I got into skateboarding at a very young age because the kids down the street that were older than me, they were like, probably at the time they were 16 and I was like eight or they were 15 and I was like seven and, uh, or even younger, I saw them skateboarding. So I begged my family to get me a skateboard and who knows how old I was. Maybe I was five, six, seven years old. <clears throat> and I started skating with these kids that were way older than me. And I got just as good as they were super fast. And, you know, my parents, like, I remember being grounded for 18, 19, 20 year old kids with tattoos, looking like a bunch of fucking dirt balls coming to my, my knocking on my door. Is Jason home? Can he come out and skate? And they're like, what are you doing with these kids? You know, and I'm like 13. But they didn't know that these were the best skaters and they used to build ramps in the woods. And I was the only kid, you know, that was allowed to skate these ramps. Like if they caught you skating their ramps, they'd fucking kill you. They'd beat the li I remember some of the beatings they gave they gave kids, man. I mean, they beat them to a pulp. They put them in a the hospital for, for skating these ramps without now, this their is in New York? Yeah, in Buffalo. Okay. They, they'd build them in the woods. You know, there were there were no skate parks around in Buffalo. There was there was no skate culture. OK, I mean, remember, we're in we're in it's cold, right? This ain't no skate culture community and it's not New York City, which is a skate culture. So there's the skate culture was like California and then it was New York City type deal. Right. So California is where it originated. And then New York City uh, kind of comes after that. But I don't know none of that stuff. All I know is these two kids down the street that were brothers were really, really good. And and I got to be really, really good. And they allowed me, they started bringing me around to these ramps that they built in these woods. You had to go find these fucking ramps, bro. They were in the middle of fucking nowhere, right? So we had to go hiking and there was markers for the trails that nobody would know, like secret shit. <laughs> But I was the youngest. Ain't nobody that was skating that ramp that was 11, right? I was like 10, 11 skating these ramps, right? And I was, so it was cool. Yeah, for me, I was like, I was special. So that was like my, uh, so that was, that was me on a daily basis with skating. Now, my grandfather had a pool table, Gold Crown 2 or 1, with, uh, you know, with the ashtrays in the corners, and he had uh, the Brunswick, Willie Moscone cue, Willie Hoppy cue, and they all played straight pool. And so when my when we would go over to my grandfather's house, the men would would be downstairs smoking and drinking and playing pool, <coughs> and the the wives would be upstairs making the little fruit and cheese and crackers thing and they'd be playing gin the women would play gin upstairs and they'd come down with the little plates and they'd serve the, the men downstairs drinking scotch and smoking cigarettes and playing playing pool so i'd sit at the top of the stairs and i'd watch them play pool and then eventually i begged enough where i was able to come down and they taught me how to play straight pool right and that's all i knew and as soon as i started playing 
<coughs> I fell in love with playing pool. And if you put any little kid in front of a pool table, I mean, it's like an instant babysitter there because it's, you know, you got colors and motion and things disappearing and noises being made and things bouncing all over the place. I mean, it's, you know, it's like ultimate stimulation. So I started learning how to play straight pool. And by the time I was like 12 years old, I was, I was beating them 13 years old. I was, I was running thirties and forties and I would, they'd put and you know, back then they were races to 150 and I'd beat them in a race to 150. Then they started, you know, they didn't want to play so long. So they played a race to a hundred and then, <clears throat> and then they stopped playing me, you know? And, uh, my dad, he told me, like, if you look at my profile picture of me sitting on that pool table, that was in my Florida room. When I was five years old, my dad got rid of the pool table. He tells me to this day, I wish I never did. But what he did was he, he also bought me one of those little, and it had real pool balls and real, and real, not real pool felt, but it was felt like one of them plastic pool tables. And so I was a, with them plastic cues and I'm, I'm running out with a plastic cue, no chalk. I'm drawing a ball. I'm fucking, I mean, so I got to be really good doing, uh, really difficult stuff at a young age. And that kind of, I, I kind of likened it to playing to, to skating because like skating is real technical. It takes a lot of skill to learn. You got to practice it over and over and over again. And there's all these different tricks and in the pool, there's all these different strokes. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. There's a million different strokes in the pool to really get to a high level. You need to know how to go through that cue ball on, on a lot of different waves, right? It's not just going straight through. Like some draw strokes require you to go in and out of the ball and come on top of the ball for a, a power follow with spin and to be able to adjust for the squirt. And there's always, <coughs> there's always these dynamics, <clears throat> these really intricate dynamics to, to high level pool. Now to be an, an average player, you don't got to know none of that shit, right? All you got to do is know how to shoot the ball. Well, what I do? Okay. All you got to do is know how to shoot the ball straight and you can run a couple balls and you might luck out and be able to run a rack or two. But high level pool is running packages. And when I was playing my best pool on a daily basis, I was running four fives and sixes, baby, just like the dice. I was, you, it was tough to beat me when I was playing my best run. And this is on a nine footer back when I was coming up in the, in Buffalo because <coughs> all the tournaments we're on nine footers. They were single elimination and they were long races. Okay. So they were like, and, and, and they were handicapped, right? They, but the, but the handicaps went from a five. And at the end, like when Dennis left, he was a 15. And when they barred me, I was a 15, but it really only went up to 10. So it was five to 10. If you were somebody that, that, you know, came in and couldn't play at all, you were a five. If you were, if you could run a couple balls, but you couldn't run a rack, you were a six. If you could break and run out maybe one out of 10 times, you were a seven. If you could, like, this is the way it was. And the people that were tens, and there weren't very many of them, right? There might have been, I don't know, 10 tens, right, in Western New York. But guess who won all the fucking tournaments? The tens. There were no fives ever winning a <coughs> ever winning a tournament. There were no. If you were a seven and you won, <coughs> you felt like God, dude. It never ever happened. It never happened. We all wanted to be a ten because the tens were winning all the money, and we all looked up to the tens. So. Uh, somewhere along the line, this whole pool world went from trying to be the best and having a handicap just to take the slight edge off.
because nobody, and, and I'm talking about, we had four, five, six, four, five tournaments a week when I first started going. I was 13 years old. They made me a seven. I got third place. First tournament I ever played in my life. And I I never, ever heard, ever, somebody say, oh, Dennis is playing. Oh, Fred's playing. Oh, Mike Najak. Oh, Crazy Frank. Oh, this guy's playing. I'm not playing. Never in life. Did that? You know what they said? I'm gonna beat you today, Frank. It's me and you today, baby. I'm coming for you, and that's that's what we saw, and that's how I came up, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now there were some tournaments. There were some tournaments that were even races. Even then, when you had the even race, so you had like three handicap, and you had like three open ones. <laughs> where everybody just raced to nine, race to seven. Those were the double elimination. Race to nine, race to seven. Race nine on the winners, winner breaks. Race to seven on the losers, winner breaks. Nine ball counts. Regular fucking rules. Nobody was changing rules to keep people. So, you know, oh, the guy snapped the nine. Okay, let's change the rule. None of this, man. Where is any of this shit coming from? It's coming from losers. OK, no winners change the rules. So. So that's kind of uh, so I started like that. I started playing straight pool. And then. Like I said, I was a skater, right? So I would go and I would skate at this place called the Clearfield Youth Center. And the Clearfield Youth Center would have these uh, speed bumps in front of in, in the parking lot. So I go and I'd skate the speed bumps and I'd skate the, uh, and this is before aggressive rollerblading. This is rollerblades hadn't even come out yet. So, I, so this is skateboard. So I would go and I would search out, you know, the, the, the biggest curbs, like the biggest curbs on the side that had like little launch ramps <laughs> and I'd build my own ramps. Once I saw these guys building these half pipes, I started building my own ramps and stuff like this. So I'm I'm skating one day and I go in to take a drink. It's in the middle of summer. I'm sweating my balls off. I'm probably 10 years old, 11 years old. And uh, yeah, I was t actually I was 10, nine or 10 because it was I was there for a couple of years before I, I won the, uh, I didn't win. I got second in this tournament. So this story is coming up. So I go in to get a drink and this door opens up and a bunch of kids run out of it. Right. And they were a little older than me. So I'm like, where the fuck did these kids come from? Right. Like, like I only know that there's a hockey rink inside and there's the, the soccer fields out back and the baseball diamonds. And then all of a sudden, there's like this magic door that just opens up that I've never seen before while I'm getting a drink, and these little kids scuffle out of it. And uh, I go inside, and I said, "What? what is that door? Like, it was a magic door in the wall. It was painted the same color as the brick. It was weird, buddy. I never noticed it. They're like, that's the youth center. I'm like, what's a youth center? They're like, well, that's like, you know, they got games and, and pottery and they got air hockey and they got the computer game. This was before Nintendo was even out or maybe Nintendo had just came out. Because <coughs> I remember, I don't remember if like they got Nintendo or if they had Nintendo. Right. And I was like, well, how do I get, you know, how do I go in there? Right. Because those kids look like they were having a lot of fun. I'm over here dying. You know what I mean? I'm going to have a heart attack from the heat. Like, how do I get in there? And uh, they're like, well, your your parents got to come and give you get you a card. It's like, I'm a, it's a separate card. So I go home, I, like, right then. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm going to get me a card. So I skate home, tell my parents. They're like, well, if you stop getting in trouble, you know, we'll get you a card. And uh, it might have took me a month or two to get a card. 
so I get a card and I go in there and uh, there's these two pool tables, right? And there's like, there's the computer room and there's an air hockey table and there's a game called four square with a big rubber ball and there's four squares and you got to hit the ball into one person's square and they got to have it bounce in the square once and before they can hit it out. And there were all these games, pottery, they take you out back and they go play soccer. But they had these pool tables, man. And, you know, from me playing straight pool, I loved it because I used to, once I started playing straight pool, my, I could stay in that basement. I think if there was ever a time in my life that I practiced, that's when it was, when I was like, seven eight nine ten years old just in my grandfather's basement playing until they yelled at me to get the fuck out of the basement and go to bed or you got to go home or i would just hit a, a million balls that's all i did i didn't you know i was happy doing that but because it was straight pool right so i mean straight pool you can play by yourself and you just shoot the balls till you run them out and rack them up and break them and, and run them out. And so I could do that forever back then. And if you, if you ask any great player, they all have a straight pool base. Like a straight pool base is the most important base that you could have. So now, obviously, I don't know nothing about pool. I don't know nothing about the pool world. I just know I love to fucking play play straight pool and i love beating my dad and my grandfather right it was you know i'm 10 11 years old beating them <coughs> so <coughs> however old i was young real young so i go into this thing they finally i get the card i go in there and you know how do you get on the table oh, everything's got a list so you go sign up so I signed up and it's my turn to play, you know, and I don't have a cue or it's all, they're all just house cues and old bar cues and stuff. And, uh, the kid breaks and, and he shoots a couple balls and it's my turn and I shoot a ball and he says, Hey, I'm stripes. And I said, what do you mean you're stripes? He says, I'm stripes. I made a stripe on the break. I said, what are you talking about? He says, what do you mean? I'm stripes. You got to shoot the solids. I said, what do you mean? I got to shoot the solids. I said, I got to shoot them all and leave the last. They're like, no, what are you talking about? Now, they never know about straight pool. I ain't never heard about eight ball. Right? So I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, how do you play? They're like, well, I'm stripes, you're solids. You just got to shoot the solids and then the eight last. I'm like, you mean you don't have to run all the balls? They're like, no, I'm like, yo, this is the easiest shit ever. Motherfucker, I was torturing everybody. I, w I was crazy all of a sudden because I don't even know no better. I'm just run Every time I get out, I'm running out from fucking nowhere. Because remember in straight pool, you got to learn to break the clusters up. Like every part of the foundation I had just being a, just from playing straight pool. Now I don't have to run the whole rack. All I got to do is run half these fucking balls. I mean, I'm staying on the table all day, every day. And then, and then on a Friday night, they'd have these tournaments. So this is my first time ever playing in a tournament. So on Friday nights is tournament night, and you get these things called a power card. So they'd have a tournament for everything. They'd have a four square tournament. They'd have a computer tournament. They'd have like whoever gets the highest score in the computer games. They'd have the air hockey tournament. <coughs> and I would pl I play in a pool tournament. Never lost a fucking tournament. Never lost a tournament. So now. I get this feeling of what it's like to win, right? Like to, to beat multiple people. I'm not just playing a game of straight pool with my dad or my grandfather. And, you know, there's no excitement really. And, you know, 
once you get to beating them, they're like, all right, son, time to go back to work. And you're like, ah, come on, you know, like, so now I start winning, right? And I get starting to really know what it's like to be a winner. <clears throat> I'll never forget this shit. And, and I think this all goes back to human nature, right? I think that life has become so easy that we've lost the basic guttural foundations of if if I'm a better hunter than you, I got more meat. That means the women want the guy with the most meat and I got the hides to make the house and my, my hut's going to be bigger than yours because I killed more buffalo and more of this and more mastodon and I got all the fucking meat and if you want to eat and you want to sleep on a nice bearskin rug, you come over to my house, right? And that's it. That's how, that's how you kept score. Who had the most wives is how you kept score in the beginning, okay? That was the score, all right? So uh, at some point in time, this is all gone, right? So now, but now, so this goes by say that to say this, I start winning all these power cards. Okay. And then some days, like once a month, it would be like double power card. So like on that Friday, and you wouldn't you'd win like three power cards a tournament. It wasn't one power card. <clears throat> so it was you get three power cards every tournament you win. So I was stacking up these fucking power cards. And then when they and then on those the once a month where it was three times, you'd win nine power cards. So I'd come into this motherfucker with a pocket of, it was like money, right? To get to the head of the line. And then they started charging me more than one power card because I would never got, any time I lost, I, here's the power card right back up to the thing. They're like, nah, motherfucker, you've been on for a week straight. You got to sit out and we're going to charge you more. What could you do with the power cards? You, it would just get you to the front of the line in anything. You just skip the line. The top of the waiting list. So yeah, if I want to play four square and I'm not at the front of the line, but I've got a power card while I'm up. I'm up next, bitch. Sit your ass down. Power card, nigga. Right. Got it. Right. So you had all the power. You had all the power. And, buddy, <laughs> when I told you I had all the power, I, had, I came in, they looked like bank rolls. They were index cards. I had index cards. You know how when you get like the thick stack of index cards, not the little one. I'm talking about where you get one of them packs like that. There's like 200 of them in that motherfucker. That's what I had. I had, I had rubber band knots of them. So, so the counselors, the counselors would get mad at me. Cause I just go right up. The kids would start crying. I remember kids crying. Jason's always up. So they started charging me two and three and four. At the end, it was four power cards. No matter what I wanted to do, I was like, "Yo, I'm not even trying to play pool. I'm trying to play four square." Tough shit, kid. Four of them. If you want to get up. So, uh, and then. They've been handicapping Hunt since he was a teenager. This is, all, this is all true stories. So then there was this guy, I'll never forget, this guy named Mike. He was a counselor. I think his name was Mike Braun or Mike, Mike uh, like Bruin or Braun or something. And he was really good at pool. And when, when, he, when I started playing... <laughs> and I started, he noticed that I was good. He started playing me and I got to where I could beat him. So now I really got good because he was a really, he was a good player. And I'm like 12 years old at this point in time. You know, this motherfucker got fired because all he did was try to come in and beat me playing pool. He wouldn't even <laughs> do nothing else. You know, that shit was crazy, right? I'm like, hey, one day I came in, I'm like, where's Mike? They're like, oh, he don't work there no here no more. I'm like, why? They're like, well, he's always playing pool with you. He wasn't doing his job. He would come in and just try to beat me playing pool. But before he got fired, I was 12 years old, 
and they had a teen night. So teen night went from, uh, so the, the regular kids went from like three o'clock or four o'clock to seven. <clears throat> then it closed down for an hour and from 7.30 to 9.30 or 10.30, uh, 7.30 to 9.30, I think on the weekdays and Friday, Saturday, I think it went to 10 or 10.30 was teen night and teen night they had inter inter youth center tournaments so they had an inter youth center air hockey tournament they had an inter youth center pottery competition they had an inter youth center so all the youth centers from like greater western new york area the clarence youth center the Harlem Road Youth Center, the West Seneca Youth Center, the Depew Youth Center, they all, like, once a year, they all had, like, a big tournament in, be in between them all. Now, I was so good at pool that they lied when I was 12 years old because they never won, right? And they had some good players as, as the teenagers. I remember Nick Fasolino... <laughs> Cup. These kids would, I mean, they would come in to the youth center. It was like a pool hall on at teen night. They came in with their cues. They would gamble. They would get, they'd get down, right? So this guy, Mike Braun or whatever, Brain or I forget, however you pronounce his last name. It was like B-R-A-U-N-E. That's how, it, that's how I think it was. Or B-R-A-U-W-A. It was a weird, it was like brown or brain or something but he lied to get me on the team he said i was 13 but i was really 12. so i'm so they take me to this harlem road tournament there's like i don't know 30 40 players all teenagers i'm the only one that are like shut up don't you ever fucking say that you're 12 years old we'll get in trouble that's probably another reason the guy got fired, right? Because he got me on a fucking team and I was 12. So, because like one day he was just gone. And I think maybe that was another reason too. But they told me he got fired because he was always playing pool. You know, and they were like, hey, there's the guy that got Mike fired because he was like one of the favorite. He was the coolest dude as a counselor. So I'm playing in this thing. And I get to the finals. Listen to how dirty they do me. So I'm in the finals. I'm playing against like an 18-year-old or a 17-year-old, right? And uh, I'm this little scrawny-ass kid with glasses, and he's this big dude. And it comes down to the – we're in the finals. And all, all the games are just one game. So back then, all the tournaments in the youth center – <laughs> if you lost, you were out. So uh, we're in the finals. I run down to the eight. And the eight ball's got like this back cut in the side pocket. But if you hit it to, it was at that perfect angle. You know how if you back cut it and you're, it's a dead scratch in the corner? And that's how it was. So... And there's no way out of it. You know, you can't draw it out. Like, the only thing you can hope to do is slow roll it or hit it a million miles an hour and hope to draw it out of the out of the pocket. Because remember, back then, it was all heavy cloth, nap cloth. There was no really slow rolling shit, right? There was there was no Simonis or nothing, at least not not in the, in the youth centers. They didn't, you know, they didn't give a, you know, fuck about that shit. So... So I go to shoot the ball, Chris and Sean, and the ball rolls off, does a banana, and misses the whole eight ball, right? So I missed the whole ball. So look, it's like this. I'll show you. I got a pool table right here. I'll never forget this the rest of my life. So here's the, here's the, here's the eight ball, like this. Here's the cue ball like this, right? So it's like this little back cut and you're dead scratch in the hole. So I shoot it. I'm the, I slow roll because I'm trying to make it so it don't get here. 
the ball bananas out like this, almost scratches, and goes like this. Now, here's the ball, right? Here's the eight ball. Here's the ball. This motherfucker's got to shoot it. You know what they tell me? Huh. They said, up. Oh, you didn't hit the eight ball. Game over. You lose. Right? They cheated me, these rotten motherfuckers. So, second place in the tournament. So, the, so the tournament first place is a trophy as big as this window. Let me show you what second place looked like. Right here. This was second place. <laughs> this, little, this little fucking thing was second place. I was so mad. The 18 year olds got the thing, they're carrying them out. I got this little ass thing that says second place. I'm sick to my stomach, mad. On the way home, I'm bitching, and my dad's like, See, this is why I don't bring it anywhere. You got an anger problem, you got a temper problem. I'm like, Yo! <laughs> this is where it all started, guys, right here. Yeah. The first time they fucked Chris. The first yeah. time they fucked well, no, Chris. This is all 100 percent true. So uh so then, right? So mm. then so now uh I'm 13, 14, and my dad, so we stopped playing. So my so my grandfather used to go, they were snowbirds and they go to Naples. And they yeah. go to Florida for the winter time. And uh uh we weren't you know sometimes we go to my grandfather's house <laughs> but a lot of times my dad would be like you know we're not gonna go to grandpa's house so i but i i wanted to play pool like i was hooked man i was hooked on skating hooked on pool hooked on art that's all i did all i did was draw skate and play pool and play basketball. I mean, I played a ton of basketball. I love basketball. And then oh, as I got older, I played a lot of tennis. I played a lot of sports. But I didn't play on teams. I would go to the tennis court and play strangers. I would play basketball at the basketball courts. I wasn't in the teams, like in school and stuff like that. Cause I wanted my time. I wanted to skate and I wanted to play pool. Like that now, now I'm trying, I'm like begging my dad, let's go to grandpa's, let's go to grandpa's. Well, one day he takes me to uh, the pool hall. Okay, so he takes me to the pool hall and I beat him playing straight pool and the manager comes over. Well, we didn't know he was the manager at the time. Uh, and he says to my dad, he says, hey, you know, uh, your son's got a lot of talent. I'd like you to bring him back on Wednesday. Now, remember, this is the weekend. The only time we played pool was on the weekend when my dad was off. And I'd like you to bring him back on Wednesday. I have a pool tournament, and I'd like I'd like for him to play. See how he does because, he's, you know, he's obviously the guy saw something to come over to me and my dad, right? So they, my dad brings me to the pool tournament and they make me a seven and I get third. I win like 380 bucks for third place. And, th and then now, oh, I can win money. And now I go buy a brand new Tony Hawk skateboard and brand new bones wheels and brand new, yo, I'm buying all the, Baseball cards I won at the corner store because the little plaza had everything. It had the penny candy store. It had the baseball card shop. It had the skate shop. It had the haircut thing. I go there. I get all freshed up. I buy a brand new board, get a couple packs of fucking upper deck and tops, go buy a two dollars, three, four dollars in penny candy, come out of there with a sack like this and fucking, you know what I mean? All the dots and the, and the, uh uh sour patch kids and the gummies and shit i mean that <laughs> was wrong. so uh and but but here was the thing right and i'll never forget this i would always lose to this guy in a pair of sandals and this guy would he always wore shorts and sandals and i never remember his name but i always remember him as the guy 
He looked like, remember the Tiva sandals, like the hiker sandals and stuff? He'd wear those Tivas and Birkenstocks and shit like that. And he looked like a little hippie guy. And he'd always beat me. And, and, and that became my goal. Like, my goal was to beat the guy in the sandals. Because he was the one that was always stopping me. And, and so, and then one day I beat him. And let me tell you something. Back then, okay, if they saw you getting better, they didn't wait for you to win. I never won at a seven. I never won at an eight. But I got moved up to an eight before I won. I, my first tournament win was at an eight. Uh, but, but they moved me up to beat like they would the manager the guy that ran the tournament oh no you ain't no seven no more i don't give a fuck if you ever cashed in your life they look at you they watch how you progress and they move you up according to where they feel that you are with the other players winning doesn't mean shit it's how you play now we're into this oh i never won at a three <laughs> i never won <laughs> These guys are at Birmingham <coughs> playing for a half a million dollars. Ain't never supposed to be. A, I never won out of three. There's only fucking four. You, uh, uh, none of them won out of three. You idiot. You ain't never supposed to be a three. What is? What does winning have to do with your skill level? It's got nothing to do with your skill level. Okay, somewhere along the line in pool. All the losers got a hold of the pens and they started making <laughs> shit up so they weren't losers anymore. Listen, buddy, uh, you are you got way better. You're an eight. You got way better. You're not a five no more. You're a six. I don't care if you ever won a penny. I don't care if you never do win a fucking penny. Your skill level has improved and therefore your equivalent number is go, you're going up. And we all wanted to go up. Nobody wanted to be a five. Nobody wanted to be a six. Nobody wanted to be a seven. Cause they would, they didn't win. The reason you were a 10 is because you won all the time. That's how you got there, motherfucker. Those are the people that won all the money. We're the best players. Okay, now let's fast forward to now to where all the losers got together and took the pencils. What? Can you give me an example of that? What do you mean, Fargo? The, 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 the biggest, the biggest, uh, the biggest example right now is this crazy ass Fargo bullshit that we got going on. It's the complete antithesis of any sport that there is like, okay, you got to see, this is, I can't, uh, you know, and this is, I think, I don't know if you've seen some of my posts and stuff. So let's, let's put the pool world into the real world. Okay. Right now, how many places can you play pool in, in OKC, wherever you live? Who, How many me? tournaments can you play in a week? Me? Yeah. None. <laughs> no, 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 okay. wait. No, they have like one, but uh, right. it's only like every fourth week of the month or something. Okay. It's like there once a go. month. Right. You... And you ain't even... Uh, you ain't no Shane. You ain't no fucking... You're like, you're a top, you're a shortstop like I was, right? And when you were playing your best, you might have beaten a couple pros if you were in a tournament and you might have beat, uh, you know, a Joey Gray or how many times you beat him or Chip. You, you've done it, but you ain't no Shane. You ain't no world the seven time U.S. Open champion. You can't play pool in your own fucking city. Well, okay. Sure. And now that's common for a lot of people. Right. So let's 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 take and let's use common sense. Let's remember for a moment this thing that's called common sense that everybody is like completely thrown out the window because 
to be corrupt equals a lot more people that never should win are winning and it's okay because they're the ones winning but it's not okay for us to win so let's do this let's try to convince a stranger to start playing our sport and let's try to convince a stranger to play any other sport so we'll start with any other sport hey bud you want to start playing basketball why would i start playing basketball well if you make it to the nba i mean it changes your life right if you get good enough now don't think that you're going to there's only a very few people on the face of the planet every year that make it to the nba you got to go through college okay but if you start playing now and you work hard enough if you get drafted it'll change your life well what do you mean change my well you might get a contract for 40 million dollars or well now they're in the hundreds of millions right so whatever all life you your children your grandchildren everybody for the rest of your life if you invest your money correctly you will have generational wealth and nobody will ever have to worry about anything okay that sounds pretty good I, I, and so how do i do that well we start you at the local gym and we, we get you on a team and you train and then we start putting you into tournaments to your team and then if you're good enough you make the travel league and you start traveling around the country and then if you're good enough somebody from high school will see you and recruit you and then as through that somebody from college will recruit you and then hopefully you get seen by an nba scout and 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 get drafted okay now let's take pool hey you want to uh come start playing pool well what's the what what you know what what's the benefit i get out of it well right now if you come in you know uh they have this thing called a handicap rating system and the worse you are you it's easier for you to win okay that, that sounds that's cool oh you mean so i mean because i've never played pool before yeah 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 no that's perfect because you know you, you're gonna be winning right away you're gonna be winning okay good uh and then what happens when i get better well we make it harder for you to win what do you mean you make it harder for me to win well we make it harder for you to win because it's not fair for the other guy we what do you mean the better i get the easier it should be for me to win right no 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 that's not fair that's not fair what's fair is the guy that's below you should be able to win too well, what do you mean the, the guy that's both the what so by definition, if I get better than somebody, that means that I'm beating them more. That's how we define better, right? Well, yes and no, because that's not fair. Well, who the fuck comes up with this definition of fair? All fair means is that I can play and you can play, and whoever wins is the better guy. Well, you know, you just, you gotta just come on, come play, come play, come play. Okay, well, hold on, let me ask you a question. Now what happens if I get really good? Oh, well, you can't play anymore. What do you mean? Uh, it's it's not fair. What do you mean it's not fair? No, I mean you're too good. You can't if you if you get too good, it's not fair for everybody else. They can't win. So you mean to tell me that if I get good at this sport? I can't play no more? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Who in their fucking right mind is going to come and start playing pool? Right? Yep. Does this sound like pure common sense? I mean, does, does any of this not make sense to anybody with some common sense? How can we create anything in a sport where the best do not have the most the best are not winning the most the best aren't the people that everybody else should strive to be 
all in the name of fairness. That is the antithesis of fair. Fair is if I'm better, I win. Now, can I lose? Sure, I can lose. Because that, that's the other thing. They got this, like somehow they, they feel like, oh, if Sean King plays, he's going to win. Uh, what are you? Is it, there, there's no guarantee I'm going to win. I got to win. I got to fade all the bad luck. I got to hope the other guy don't shit no nine balls in. I got to hope the other guy don't shit safe. I got to hope the, the other guy don't uh, have the best day of his life and never miss a ball. And I hope I don't have the worst day of my life and have everything go perfect for me. There's no guarantee to win nothing. But we've worked hard. We paid our dues. We went and got our brains beat in day after day after day after day, paid attention, got back on the table, put our time in for practice the shots we missed, put, invested in ourselves, played in another tournament, another tournament, another tournament, another tournament. And then guess what? One day we booked a winner. And then once you book a winner, now you start feeling, oh, shit. This is what it feels like to be a winner. I like this. I'm coming back tomorrow for real. Or I'm going home and practicing double time because I want to win tomorrow. And now maybe my nuts get a little bit bigger and I go in there and I say, hey, Joey Gray, let's go, baby. I got $100. We're playing $20 sets or $30 sets till I'm busted. Let's go. Come get this free 100 Pool's the only sport, then, yeah. Pool's the only sport where you get better that you don't get rewarded for it. Yeah. Only, the only sport. The only sport. Not and only do you not re get rewarded, you get punished. Right, right. Like, like, ostracized. Not, and, and it's, listen, it's an extreme punishment. Sean, go ahead, take your time. No, I got to walk into the kitchen, but I'm, I can listen to you. Okay. It's the only sport where you get ostracized. So what what happens is, is that we go and we get used to. Now, I was never a league guy. OK, I was a tournament. I went to the tournaments. That's what I liked. I liked the competition. Uh, and I wanted to be the guy that was the 10. I always wanted to be them. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to. That was my goal was to be them guys that won all the money because it was real money back then. I mean, first places, you know, almost every day was 700 to 14, 1500. If they had a good Calcutta, you know, it could be 2200, you know, a couple days a week. So that's it's you know it's probably kind of like being in the drug game, right? The guys that were moving the keys. Were the guys that were the, the biggest money makers, and everybody tried to get up to be moving big weight because that's where all the money. That's where, you know, they weren't the low level guys. Same thing in pool. You wanted to be the best guy in the city because the best guy in the city was the guy, by definition, that was winning the most. And by winning the most, by definition, you had the biggest pocket. You had the biggest bankroll. And that, how, did, how did they offset that? You said it. There was Calcutta's. And if you thought Jason Hunt was going to win that weekend, there was nothing to stop you from betting on him. Right. And, and that, and that, separate from the tournament, they handicapped the money. For example, right. it cost you a whole lot more to buy half yourself than right. did this guy who can, who can run one rack. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and, and that was the thing. Uh, there were no, you know, nowadays you'll have some of the lower players going for huge numbers. Uh, the Calcutta's that I grew up in, first of all, everybody started at 20. There was never any fives or tens. I can't, you know, I, I life right now, it's such a big joke, man, what they, what they're doing with these numbers, but everything you, you had to have yourself for 20 and you went up by tens. And, you know, most players went for 10 or for 20, 30, $40. And all the guys that were tens 
And then at the end, once this other guy took over, they started making 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Like I said, when Dennis left, he was a 15. When I left, I was a 15. But nobody else was even – everybody else was still at 10. And a couple of them went up, up to 11. But we were giving up, you know, the, the most weight. But here's the thing. We were still winning the most because we got to be where we were running packages. I was running fours, fives, and sixes. I, if I, I, I would, I would win a race to twelve in, in three, three innings. You know, I get up there, I'd run a four pack, I, I'd break dry, or I'd scratch, I'd sit down. Guy might win a game. He, something would happen. I get up, I break, run another four, five. Now it's nine to one, nine to two. You know, and remember the bottom line was five. So, you know, if I was going to 12, I, you know, I'd beat people 12 to two, 12 to three, uh, you know, very rarely, uh, only until I started, they, cause like I said, when a new owner came along and he started making them crazy numbers, cause he was a bitch, he was a loser. Dave Colson, the guy that owned these pool rooms in the beginning and crazy Frank and Ronnie and Ronnie Kaczynski or whatever the fuck his last name was. Crazy Ronnie. There was Crazy Frank, Crazy Ronnie. And uh, they were good players. They were winners. Okay. And they didn't play in their own tournaments. Okay. Now, later on, they did. Right. Uh, sometimes they did. But in the beginning, they they owned the pool room. They were they were gamblers. They were running these tournaments for the players to make a bunch of money. Cause guess what? In hopes that the guys that won would gamble with them. Okay. So I'll give you a chance to win 1,200, 1,500, 2,200 three times a week. And maybe you'll blow four or five or six or seven or all of it back to me afterwards. Cause you're on your little high horse. You know what I mean? And that's and that's kind of how that went. But then we got this guy. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Mike. Mike something that owns the pool room now. When he got a hold of it. We got a loser that's running the pool room now. So now this guy, uh, you know, starts caring who wins. These guys never cared who won their tournaments. No, there was never a care about who won the tournament. Now, once again, in Classic Q, when Danny DiLiberto and Carl were, were running it, they never cared. But then when they gave it over to this fucking hater, this guy named Kurt, he started caring because he was just a player that couldn't win. And now all of a sudden he's running the tournament and now he's jealous of the guys like me and like Mike Najak and like this guy and like that guy. So once you get a loser running things, they're going to create it. They're, they, they are, they're already jealous and they're haters. And now we give them the pen. You know, here, here's the power. Here's the wand. And you can't yeah. have that. That's like, and they're not the top. So in other words, you know what all this comes down to? It comes down to having the right people for the job. <clears throat> How many pool rooms <clears throat> have you ever been to, Sean, where the owner will tell you, I don't want no good players in here? Have you heard that before? Yeah. Me too, right? First time I heard that, I was like, what did you just say? I go into a place, mm -hmm. and I say, hey, i never been there. Hey, you guys got any tournaments? I don't know. We don't do that. Forget the owner. The tournament director would say it. Would, right, right. Somebody. Somebody will say, in a position of power, that's working at the establishment of a pool room. We don't want no good players in here. That's, well, they're indirectly saying it by by capping tournaments. Oh, and, oh yeah, for sure. But it's.
But it's a different way of indirectly saying it because here's the thing. And what's going on right now, see, when I grew up, nobody uh, worked hard to lower their number. You didn't win nothing, but you didn't gain by getting worse. The only way you gained was by winning and by winning, your number went up. Right. And so, you know, and, and and like I said, before this fucking loser Mike got a hold of the pool room, you could only get to 10. So it's kind of like in the APA where, you know, you're a seven and a nine, but there's a whole range of sevens and nines. Yeah. Right. And that's how it was in 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 that at that 10 level. It was like its own little world where you could only get to a 10. And now these guys, you know, uh, are battling it out to become the best that they could be within themselves and, and get the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? And very few times did a did a eight or a seven win. They might have gotten second or third, but it usually went 10, 9, 8. 9, 10, 8. 10, 10, 7. 10, 10, 8. 10, 10, 9. 10, 10, 10. Those were the number, like, those were the levels that were, you know, first, second, and third was always 10, and then another number underneath it. Very few times did you see not the highest number up there being the winner, getting that money. Sure. Yeah. And we all wanted to be, we, that's who we wanted to be. And there were, nobody ever got barred. You never had to sit out. You know, everybody looked up to them. They were the celebrities in the in the pool. They were the tens. That's what it was. Oh, you're a ten? Oh, shit. I go, you're a taser. You look at him. He's a, that's a ten. There's another ten. He just, oh, we don't even know who he is. Let's watch him. He's a ten. It was prestigious. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. We just spent about an hour on that. Let's move to the next conversation, well, Chris. What do you got? Let's well, let's do this Fargo thing. Okay. We'll keep going, but I want to hear some solutions. Uh, I've got a hundred complaints myself, and I want to hear the solutions. The solution? What? The, well, the solution is Buffalo's progressive pool league. So this okay. is the, so this is the solution. Okay. So the solution is every day we have a pool tournament to play in. It. We split the brackets. So we take the low players and they all play each other even races. Okay, and everybody plays even until the final. So so this is so this is what it is. Okay. And I don't care about if you're saying you have a hundred you have well a hundred complaints, what? You're looking at something or no? No, no, you're I've got it. I've got a hundred complaints about the way that Fargo is being used right now. Oh yeah. Well I it's can it's weaponized. So, but but here's 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 the fix. Here's the fix for pool. Okay. And being that our, our pool is broken at its foundation, we're never going to be able. These people think that pool is great uh, for all. Listen, there. This is the lowest ceiling pool has ever had. Pool's never had a ceiling so low. Okay. So. What it is, is it's a ladder system. It's called the lucrative player's ladder. <laughs> That's coined by me. Everything that you hear is all me. Come, This is what I've come up with. And I sent out emails 10 years ago to all the people that I, I felt to bring on board. And for whatever reason, they didn't come on board. And actually, some people like Ed Liddell, we tried stealing my idea, changing it into something. And he created that National Billiards League 
biggest joke in life where pros can buy their way in and all this is all this bullshit. This is what needs to happen. We need an amateur players ladder, universal ladder system that takes another coin phrase, Joe Schmo to touring pro. We need to go back to creating professional players within each town, city, and state, respectively. Every pool room should have a best player that would be their house pro, that that pool room promotes and supports to become the best player that they can be. Now, this league, this tournament league that I've created, Buffalo's Progressive Pool League, gives a player like me, a guy with no support, no backer. I don't know somebody well enough to uh, have them put me up for a ton of money. The only time that ever happened was just recently with TV Mike. We went 50000 within three months, and the guy's so fucked in the head that and if it ain't about him filming, we can't even go get no more money. The guy's so fucked up. <clears throat> so I had the perfect situation with the absolute wrong person. But once again, I needed that, right? This gives us the ability to never need nobody. We don't need nobody. All we need to do is be able to win on a daily basis. So what it is, it's just a split bracket. And here are the levels, D, C, B on the low side, A, double A, triple A on the high side. That's it, six levels. The only way to move up is to win a tournament. Okay? So you got to win six times to move up one level. 40 players a day, 20 on the low side, 20 on the high side. This is where the numbers become very feasible. 20 players on the low side, all playing even, say, a race to four. Winner breaks. All 20 players on the high side, say a race to five. Winner breaks to keep the to keep uh, the time limit down. Okay, so we take the winner of the low side, and we take the winner of the high side, and we put them together in the finals. Now we give the low player the opportunity to play a great player with a slight handicap, okay? So that slight handicap gives them some possibility of winning in case you have all these clowns that act like can't nobody beat a better player, and that's how they act. I'll never beat this guy unless I play him nine to three. This crazy bullshit defeatist pussy mentality that has permeated pool and is now solidified as cancer with this Fargo thing. Okay. So every day in every city all across the world, there's a tournament that we can go and find. And if you pay, if you if you enter, if you enter the league, you pay your due. That's what makes it a league, right? You pay your membership fee, uh, and I have all those numbers, right? And uh, somebody just knocked at the door. Hold on. So I think this somebody ordered DoorDash. That's what they do. They order DoorDash. They knock on the door. Yep. Hey, buddy. Appreciate you. <laughs> The pin number, they're in the back. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like in the back. That's probably them, man. Oh, you, you're probably good. You have to put it in? Yeah, I got to put it four digits. It doesn't let me in. Yeah, God, man. Hold on a second. Man. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, so, <laughs> so now we're going to take some things because I want you guys to really I think something changed. Hold on, pause for a second. Something changed.
Right, great. Okay, so yeah, that's not, it's definitely like coming through Google. Oh, All I did was hit pause. I want everyone to be able to hear you. Well, there's an echo. Why don't you just restart it? Just call me right back and we should restart it. I think you're on speakerphone. Well, he's been on speakerphone the whole time. I'm on speakerphone. I'm on speakerphone. It's echoing. Just, just call me if you start the thing. Okay. All right. Hey. Can you hear me? It's you. Hey. Hang up and call me back. Hey, hey. 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 Um, why don't you call him back and, and, and finish up? So I'm going to do this with Shannon. But it's going to be recorded. You can record. Let's call him back together, and we'll come back together. Getting long, buddy. Time for a cut. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, so every day we got we got this tournament, right? And it's <coughs> it's only for <coughs> it, it's it's something that's separate from. Excuse me. The rest of the pool world of what's going on right now, um, and if you choose to, right? So we have a tournament every day where first place will pay a thousand, second place will pay five hundred, third and fourth is two fifty, two fifty. So it equals real time money. Uh, the way I kind of come up with the numbers is if you have a small mortgage, a thousand dollars will pay it. So you in one tournament a month, you can pay your mortgage. Uh, $500 equals a car payment, unless you got a real expensive car, 500 covers your car payment, $250 equals groceries, a nice night out with your wife, take the kids to the movies, buy them some school clothes. These numbers equal real money, uh, real world, uh, equivalents. <laughs> okay. So, um, everybody plays even there's one tournament a day in, in, it can go per capita, per population, like per city, whatever, right? And so there's 40 players, 20 on the low side, 20 on the high side. Everybody plays even. In the finals, there's a slight handicap. So it might be like a 6-4 race, winner breaks. Uh, and everything's winner breaks. Because what we want uh, to do is we want to – um get back to having players run packages pool is about who can run the most racks once you get to a certain level you'll not though you know when you see them copenies or whatever run them tens and them guys run them 11s you'll never see that justin bergman running a 20 whatever fucking 17 or 18 you can't you'll never that's real pool okay that's that is pool that is the goal to get to where you can break control the one get a shot and run the fuck out and do it multiple multiple times and if i can do it better than you you got if you can't do it better than me you can't beat me right because pool is the only sport that you can win and lose from the chair okay this is pool Whoever created pool, created all, other than snooker, created all pocket billiards to be break, find a way to make a ball in a break, and run out. And the same, even in straight pool, people will be like, oh, well, straight pool, not if you make that corner ball. You bank that corner ball and start running, baby. Okay? Uh, so, you know, from the break, I've run 60. That's my, from the break is my high. Break, bank that corner, run 60. My high run in straight pool is 98. I never broke 100, but uh, one of my high runs at 60 was break, bank that corner ball back into the top corner and, and run. 
Okay. The only reason they don't do that is because making it is very difficult, but you can get to where you make it all the time. I mean, I got into where I was making that motherfucker. So that's how pool was designed. Whoever created this shit created it where you can make a ball in the break and the other guy can never get up off his chair at the epitome of the talent of every every one bank pool one pocket they took that away in one pocket now you can't make a ball in the break you got to re-rack when i learned one pocket man if you made a ball in the break that's the only way you break run eight and in all the original tournaments it was break make a ball and keep shooting you know there was none of this and, and it was winter breaks I, i'm for winter breaks all right let's Always. let's move let's move for let's move Towards the money side of it, what's it cost a player to get in that that daily event? So, so, here, so here's the thing: fifty of it. So we have forty players. We don't need any outside money. You don't need no sponsorship. That's the other thing. The thing that I've created, we don't need no money. What I need is an app. I need an app, and I need tournament directors. Okay, that's what I need. I need an app, and I need tournament directors in every city willing to run these tournaments on a daily basis. The tournament director, what we're doing is creating, I'm I'm creating jobs as tournament directors. You get $5 a player. So what's 40 times five? 200. Enough for a hot dog and a Coke. So you make 200 a day to run a tournament. If you run all seven of them, you make 1,400 a week. That's probably what a good tournament director is worth. I mean, because you don't want an average tournament director if you're trying to do any good, but a, a, somebody who's worth worth it and does a great job and no bias and, uh, you know, babysits 40 whining pool players all day. Yeah, I think 200 is a good number. Yeah. So you get five. So you get five bucks a day. So here's so here's what it is. Uh, so it's a sixty dollar bill. Ten dollars goes to the business. OK, if we get 100,000 players all across the world playing every day, that's a million a day, 10 times 100,000 million a day is 365 million a year. That's what the business can generate. Now, that's just off of the ten dollars per player. Okay? Playing that's once normal. a week or no, every, how often? Every day, every day, every day, every day, all over. All right. So in Oklahoma City. There's one every day. You go to the next city, there's one every day. You go to the next city, there's no matter where we go. We can travel all over the country, and we can really, it's it's, it's a global system. So we can go out, if we go to China, where is there a Buffalo's Progressive Pool League tournament today? Yeah, it's in Wing Chun Fung's pool room. Okay, I go over there. It's in Ping Peng Pao's bar. Okay, we go over there. We go to Australia. It's anywhere we go, universal. Okay, so if we get a hundred thousand players a day, that's a million a day, it's 365 million a year. Now we take 200 million and we use it as a it's kind of like a, a foundation. So now we got 200 million to fund anything we want to do us open here here's two million added the women's pba here here's two million added every tournament a million added every tournament the juniors here's a million added every tournament uh we can have uh so so now the but the goal of the league is to create pro players so as you move up from Joe Schmo to Touring Pro. From Joe Schmo to Touring Pro. So uh, as the, as a triple A, if you win six times, you get a you get a five thousand dollar package to go to any tournament you want. Doesn't matter what it is. Or you not go and keep um, the money. Or not go and just keep the money. Or not go and get half in cash. Half in cash. So that day, Sean King in Oklahoma City wins his sixth tournament at a triple A 
and Sean's married with three kids and and doesn't give two living shits about playing in a in a professional tournament cuz he's too busy with his family not only does he win the 1000 but he gets a check cut from Buffalo's progressive pool league for 2500 okay hey chris yeah i know you said we're going to have to make this a two parter how much time we got well we need to her dad her dad's waiting on us so we got to Go to the Lawton and do some Indian stuff. Okay. Do we want to pick this back up uh, tomorrow? I'm good. I mean, I've just got to drive drive to Derby tomorrow night. So. Um, Are you going to Derby? I'm I'm free most all day tomorrow. Okay. Plus, it's supposed to be yeah. cold, so I ain't doing shit anyway. Let's do let's do a two 